Hello, welcome to Jask Draws. I'm Jask and I draw. For the month of November, I streamed some concept art for a redesign of one of my Dungeons and Dragons characters, Enho. For this video, I'm going to talk about both him as a character and about the process I went through for his redesign. I haven't drawn him yet on this channel, so this is going to be new to most of you, but I hope you like what I've put together, so let's get into it. Enhel, like most D&D characters I make, was created on a whim. He wasn't made to be part of a specific setting or game, he was just a really cool character with a really cool idea that I made mostly for fun. As such, a lot of what went into his initial first design was pretty self-indulgent. If I'm honest, I never really expected to play him and therefore didn't try to tailor him to fit a certain fantasy visual. His original design was pretty modern for a D&D character. A few elements of his style were influenced by some of my favorite musicians and models, and of course there was a fair share of personal aesthetic preferences in there as well. The modernness, however, was not why I redesigned him. In fact, his new design still looks pretty modern, as you can see, maybe even more so than it was before. I went through a visual change after I messed around with his backstory details and slapped on a personality shift to boot, so let me give you some context for that so you can follow my train of thought a bit better. Here I will put a sensitive content warning. Enhel's backstory contains mentions of graphic surgery, dismemberment, a torture mention, and psychological manipulation. So if you don't want to hear any of that audio, you can mute the video until the warning sign that I put up is gone. But what you need to know is that he was raised by a hag due to being the firstborn child in a deal that the hag made with his father. He would escape her in his childhood and she would cause him nightmares and make him see all sorts of uncomfortable illusions and was able to do this through her magical ownership over him. If you don't want to hear any of the details, go ahead and mute the video now. So like I said, Enhel was raised by a hag because his dad made a deal many, many years before he was born and firstborn child was the payment in this deal. Hag Mom, as she is popularly called, raised him with the intent to turn Enhel into another hag. However, this did not pan out because Hag Mom was impatient with the rate at which toddlers grow and with how bad at magic they are. Enhel as a person was also just not good at magic, so in the end, Hag Mom didn't really know what to do with this human baby she had acquired. So, Hag Mom started to harvest parts of him. She would perform various surgeries on him, all the way from bloodletting to, like, opening up his arms and taking bones out of them, straight up chopping off some of his fingers, his hands. His eyes were removed a number of times, certain organs were taken, etc. This boy was harvested in every sense that someone can be harvested. And Hagmom would just use magic to patch him back up and help him recover so she could do it endlessly. She kept everything that she harvested from him for use in her personal magic, and very creepily just kept it around the house. As Enhel got older, Hagmom waited less and less in between her surgeries to do it again, and she also stopped taking as much care to make it as painless as possible. Enhel didn't like that very much. He didn't like the increased amount of pain. In fact, it was kind of edging into dangerous territory because Hag Mom was just starting to get negligent towards him and towards his life and towards his health, which up until now she had cared about. So fearing for his life, Enhel decides to try to escape. He does manage to escape her, and by this time, he was anywhere from 10 to 12 years old, maybe even as old as 13. The place he escapes to is a recently Civil War torn area, and as such, there are a bunch of other orphans in this place. So he makes friends with them, and this gaggle of children keep each other safe. But because Hagmom owns Enhel's body and soul due to the magical contract shenanigans, she decides to punish him by long distance torture. So she would inflict nightmares upon him when he slept, she would make him uh, see her hiding in dark corners or just peering around buildings. Sometimes she would replace his reflection with her own in you know, passing window reflections or in mirrors. Sometimes she would also make him hear things and also feel things, like her hands on the back of his shoulders or her whispering in one of his ears. 
Sometimes she would even make him smell certain things, like most commonly an excess amount of blood, making him think about all the surgeries that he was having before his escape. She did this in unpredictable frequencies for years after he ran away, and in response, he ended up developing an amount of paranoia because he didn't know when the next time these things were going to happen to him. So when he was young and all these other orphans were noticing this problem he was having, eventually they helped him figure out how to manage it a little bit better. You know, they would figure out ways to help him tell the difference between something that was an illusion and something that was real or someone would always be beside him and if he saw something, heard something, smelled something, whatever, he'd be able to consult them to confirm whether or not something was there. He also had a familiar for this, that's the little ferret weasel that he has crawling on his arm, and she was meant to help him figure these things out as well. She's specifically white in all of her forms, so she's easier to see in the dark, because Enhel is terrified of the dark and doesn't like to sleep or dream, because that's when his hag mom can get him the easiest. In the dreams and nightmares, she would repeatedly torture him, dismember him, all of those things that he feared would happen to him if she found him or if he went back, or even just the worst case scenario if he would have stayed. Even happy dreams, or dreams that are not nightmares, either turn into nightmares partway through, or Enhel just doesn't believe that he could have a good dream. Because what if that's also her manipulation? The paranoia in his later years ended up doing a lot of hag mom's work for her, because he's not having a good time. Okay, now we're out of the woods with the sensitive content, so with the circumstances of Enhel's upbringing, his original personality was basically only fear and anxiety. And that singular emotion was not very engaging to play. He was quiet and reserved, which is fine in a character, but it was so bad with Enhel that it ended up being more passivity than just being afraid or uncomfortable with speaking up. There were sometimes weeks and weeks worth of sessions where Enhel wouldn't say anything in game because that's how deep rooted his fear was. He couldn't even talk to his party members or voice an opinion at all. So I wanted to change that. So I started to lean in a direction where the orphans and their help, and also being in a busier society, that he learned how to cope with all of it, at least to a degree. So this gave me a little bit of wiggle room for a personality that wasn't exclusively fear to show up. So this iteration of Enhel is a little bit more outspoken, he's a little bit blunt, He's not going to blurt out every thought that's on his mind, but he's also not going to keep all those to himself like he would before. He's more sarcastic now, and he has a little bit more confidence than he did before. The paranoia and the fear and the anxiety are still there, of course, but those are not the primary character traits anymore. So with the change in personality, I decided to look over the rest of his design as well, because if I was putting emphasis on the orphans in his backstory and like actually bringing elements and environmental factors from his history to the forefront, I figured his design could echo some of that as well. Looking back at his first portrayal, I did not put any thought towards how he would have gotten to this point as an adult or think about those potential environmental influences like I was saying. Preference in design became the primary design rather than drawing factors from his history, and for this character, I feel like that was the wrong approach. In his original design, he was wearing a matching set of leather jacket, pants with padding on it that matched, it also doubled as his leather armor, a mesh crop top shirt, a long fishnet throw type thing underneath the jacket, and a long black scarf thrown over his shoulders. He also wore a sash and a tie, because why not? The thing that gets me about this design looking back on it is how neat it looks. There's not really any wear and tear here. Even the fishnet looks very neat. The only element of wear that he had in his previous design was a busted seam on the shoulder, which I kept in this design as well. But other than that, he looked far too neat to be someone who was the equivalent of a homeless adventurer. So with this new one, I decided to take an approach of somebody who has worn the same things for a while. 
So for his redesign, I kept certain elements of the original, like the leather coat with the cuffs rolled up, the mesh shirt, the scarf, but I changed them so they would be more practical things that he would keep over a long period of time. As such, the ends of the jacket have little holes in them, and there's also some dirt and texture on the ends of the jacket and in some spaces on the scarf. The buttons on the jacket have all fallen off and been replaced by now, and his pants have patches here and there. And you can't see it, but one of his elbows also has a patch on it. He's got a couple of trinkets, but none of them match. Everything is sort of things that he has accumulated over the years and he didn't get rid of or couldn't get rid of. The only thing that was self-indulgent about this design that I probably realistically should have gotten rid of but I didn't want to was the mesh shirt. It covers a lot more than the previous one did because this one's not a crop top, but it is a deep V, but it does have a purpose. I wanted to show off the scars that Enhel has across his torso. There wouldn't really be a reason for Enhel to ever take his shirt off in a game setting, and I wanted to show off his autopsy scar. I couldn't do that if he was covered all the time, so I gave him a mesh shirt. This same idea is why his sleeves are rolled up and his pants as well. I also decided to give him a bunch of tattoos, so the mesh shirt also works to show the ones off that are on his torso, for the same reason as before. All of his tattoos are written in Enochian. Enochian is a 16th century occult language developed by Dr. John Dee and Edward Kelly, if you're interested in learning more about it anyway. It is an incomplete language, but it is one of my favorite things to study, and I'll be honest, I use it whenever I possibly can. So Enhel got a bunch of Enochian incantation tattoos that are meant to ward off Hagmom's influence. Whether or not it works is up for debate, but it certainly makes him feel better. Some of the lines in the incantations also talk about the power that he inherited from the Hag and about the deal that he was a part of before he was even born as well as some of the things that he can do now on his own. A couple lines are geared towards completely staving off Hagmom's influence, while others are built towards building him up as a person with confidence and defense. Since I put so much work into the tattoos, I didn't want those to be completely covered either. I also like the idea of someone looking at Enhel and looking at the weird placement of his scars and his tattoos and wondering how he got those and like why he has them. There's a lot of room for rumor to surround Enhel and I enjoy the narrative potential that it could have. Even if it's not touched on in a game setting, it's interesting to think about for how he might have developed as a person dealing with all that mystery surrounding himself. But now that we're at the end of the video, let's look at the final drawing. I do feel like this revamped version fits Enhel's whole deal, personality and all, a whole lot better than his original design. While I did end up maintaining a lot of influences from the original, this backs up a lot more aspects of his upbringing both alongside and away from the hag, and it manages to hint at his circumstances without it being a bit too obvious. In this particular pose, it also indicates his personality a little bit, which is something that he lacked in his previous art. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what you see and you want to see more art and videos, you can subscribe to me here on YouTube and click the notification bell to know when new videos are posted. And you can follow me on social media at Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Or if you're feeling spicy, you can support me on Patreon. All of those links are going to be at the end of the video and in the description. If there's anything you would like to see me draw in the future, please leave a comment to let me know. Once again, thank you so much for your time and attention. This has been Jask Draws. I am Jask, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.